In these videos, I use chemicals that can cause burns and respiratory problems. If you are to replicate any of the experiments or procedures shown in my videos, please do so in a fume hood or outside, and please wear suitable gloves when handling acids. Hello everyone, and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I will be refining some gold that I have collected over the year. In this container, I have 14.5 grams of gold that has all been taken from e-waste. Six grams of it was already melted into a nugget, but it wasn't refined first, so it will need to be dissolved. I'm expecting there to be some silver chloride, platinum and palladium contamination, and this all needs to be removed to ensure the gold is 24 carat. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm adding around 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, along with a good heap teaspoon of potassium nitrate. This produces what's known as poor man's aqua regia. I've set the hot plate to a low setting, and I'll let the gold dissolve. After a couple of minutes, the reaction has got underway. As the gold dissolves, bubbles of nitrogen dioxide start to form, and it doesn't take long for the reaction to really take off. The fine powder has a high surface area, so the gold can be attacked from all sides. All of the gold powder is now dissolved, and all that's left is the small nugget. The reaction is a lot calmer now due to the low surface area of the nugget. This also means it's going to take a lot longer to dissolve. I'll do a quick stannous chloride test to see what I have in solution. It's showing gold with platinum and palladium contamination. This is common with gold from e-waste. I'll place this to one side for now, and I'll prepare some ferrous sulfate to precipitate the gold with. Using ferrous sulfate instead of sodium meta bisulfite has several advantages. It is affordable and readily available. Ferrous sulfate, also known as copperas, is commonly used in gardening to eliminate moss in grass. Secondly, ferrous sulfate does not have the same strong sulfur smell that gets to the back of your throat. And thirdly, ferrous sulfate selectively precipitates gold, while sodium metabisulfite can also precipitate trace amounts of platinum and palladium in addition to gold. The gold particles also appear to be larger when using ferrous sulfate. Preparing this is straightforward. Just create a saturated solution with hot water, and then filter it. Back to the dissolution, and as you can see, that little nugget is still dissolving. I've paused the heating process for now. Next, I will transfer the solution into a smaller beaker, extract the gold nugget, and flatten it to expose more surface area for the acid to work on. As you can see, there is a lot of silver chloride sitting at the bottom of the jug. This shouldn't cause much of a problem, and I can filter it once all of the gold is in solution. Now that the gold has been flattened, the reaction has picked up, and it's dissolving nicely. I'm also using an excess of potassium nitrate. This is important for the next step. I'll let this dissolve, and I'll get back to you once the reaction is finished. Now that all of the gold is dissolved, it's time to remove any lead that might be present in the solution. For this, I'll be using sulfamic acid. For sulfamic acid to work, there must be an excess of nitric acid in the solution. 
Just throw in a small amount at a time until there is no more reaction. Be aware that if there is a large excess of nitric, it could foam up quite high, so make sure to use a large enough beaker to allow for the reaction. What's happening in this reaction is that the excess nitric acid reacts with the sulfamic acid to produce sulfuric acid, nitrous oxide, and water. The sulfuric acid that is produced then reacts with any lead chloride in the solution and converts it to insoluble lead sulfate. I'll let it cool down and settle before moving on to the filtering process. After cooling the solution and allowing everything to settle, I will use a suction filter to separate the solution and recover the gold. The only thing left to do now is to drop out the gold. Just pour in the ferrous sulfate and watch the gold fall like rain. If you look at the top, you'll see gold is visible floating on the surface. I'm going to boil the solution to help the gold settle out faster. It appears to have settled out nicely. Now it's time to clean it up. I'll decant the solution and move the gold into a smaller beaker to start the washing process. I'll make a start with some hot water washes. I do this to remove as much of the waste solutions as possible. Once I've washed the gold powder a few times, I like to move on to boiling the gold in hydrochloric acid. It only needs around 10 minutes. I'm using concentrated hydrochloric acid for this step. The hydrochloric acid boil has removed more impurities, as you can see by the color of the acid. This will get poured into the stock pot, and I'll continue with some hot water washes. After three hot water boils, I'll now move on to a household ammonia rinse. This is done to remove any silver chloride present. When ammonia is added to solid silver chloride, the silver chloride dissolves and breaks into silver and chloride ions. The silver ions then react with the ammonia to form a diamine silver ion. I'll boil this and rinse again with distilled water. With the gold now washed clean of a lot of impurities, I'm going to re-dissolve the gold. This second refine will ensure that the gold is completely clean of impurities. I added around 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and a heaped teaspoon of potassium nitrate. 
This should be more than enough to dissolve all this gold powder. I'll speed the video up for this reaction to keep the video short. The reaction took around 10 minutes in total. Once again, I'm using sulfamic acid to remove any excess nitric acid and any lead that may be present. Remember earlier I said this reaction can be quite large. This is why it's best to use a larger beaker. I'll add some cold water to cool the solution, and then I'll begin the filtration. I've noticed that the solution had a light cloudy appearance, so I've decided that once it's pulled through this filter, I'll cotton filter it to clear it up. I'll get back to you once it's done. The solution appears cloudy in this jug too, but that's just condensation on the outside of the glass. For this second precipitation, I'm using sodium metabisulfite. This produces less waste than the ferrous sulfate, and this time, I don't have to worry about the platinum and palladium. I'll boil the solution to help settle the gold out faster. The gold is looking beautiful. It's all clumped together nicely and it's a uniform color. I'll repeat the whole wash process again off camera and I'll get back to you once it's dry. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of how the gold looked before and after the refining. Right, let's get this gold melted. I'll melt the gold using my microwave furnace. I've added some borax to a brand new melt dish and also mixed a little in with the gold. This is an old microwave and it's no longer used for heating food. I'll set the timer for 10 minutes and I'll see you once it is cooked. If you are going to use one of these furnaces yourself, Please remember that the inside of the lid will be extremely hot. I forgot this and set fire to my countertop. Try to place it on some fireproof material such as a fire brick or ceramic wool. Let's cool this gold off and take a look. Stunningly beautiful. Let's see how heavy it is. 13.3 grams. Not bad at all. That does, though, mean a loss of 1.2 grams of impurities. I'm cool with that. If you guys like this video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and hey, if you're feeling it, 
go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.